In this video, we propose to lay down the foundation for a treatise on cosmic fire and to consider the subject of fire both macrocosmically and microcosmically, thus dealing with it from the standpoint of the solar system and of a human being. This will necessitate some preliminary technicalities, which may seem at first perusal to be somewhat obtuse and complicated, but which, when meditated upon and studied, may eventually prove illuminating and of a elucidating nature. When the mind has familiarized itself with some of the details explained here, it might come to be regarded as providing a logical hypothesis concerning the nature and origin of energy and the relationship between the microcosm and macrocosm. The concept of fire can therefore be analogous to the animating principle of the universe, or the stuff behind ordinary matter. It is the subjective life or purpose behind every form, and from its internal combustion and luminosity creates the perpetual motion of the cosmos. One boundless, immutable principle, one absolute reality, which antecedes all manifested conditioned being. It is beyond the range and reach of any human thought or expression. The manifested universe is contained within this absolute reality and is a conditioned symbol of it. In the totality of this manifested universe, three aspects are to be conceived. The first cosmic logos, impersonal and unmanifested, the precursor of the manifested. The second cosmic logos, spirit, matter, life, the spirit of the universe. The third cosmic logos, cosmic ideation, the universal world soul. From these basic creative principles and successive gradations, there issue in ordered sequence the numberless universes comprising countless manifesting stars and solar systems. Each solar system is the manifestation of the energy and life of a great cosmic existence whom we call, for lack of a better term, a Solar Logos. This Solar Logos incarnates or comes into manifestation through the medium of a solar system. This solar system is the body or form of this cosmic life and is itself triple. This triple solar system can be described in terms of three aspects or, as the Christian theology puts it, in the terms of three persons. Electric fire, or spirit, the first person, the father, life, will, purpose, positive energy. Solar fire, or soul, the second person, the sun, consciousness, love, wisdom, equilibrized energy. Fire by friction, or matter. The third person, the Holy Spirit, form, active intelligence, negative energy. I am. I am that. I am is more than just being. It is becoming. Becoming the presence that I am that.
These three aspects of the whole are present in every form. The solar system is triple, manifesting through the three mentioned above. A human being is equally triple, manifesting as spirit, soul, and body, or monad, ego, and personality. The atom of the scientist is also triple, being composed of a positive nucleus, the negative electrons, and the totality of the outer manifestation, the result of the relation of the other two. The three aspects of every form are interrelated and susceptible of intercourse because energy is in motion and circulates. All forms in the solar system form part of the whole and are not isolated units. This is the basis of brotherhood, of the communion of saints and of astrology. These three aspects of God, the solar logos, and the central energy or force demonstrate through seven centers of force, three major centers and four minor. These seven centers of logoic force are themselves so constituted that they form corporate entities. They are known as The seven logi embody seven types of differentiated force and are known as the lords of the rays. The names of the rays are Ray 1, the ray of will or power. Ray 2, the ray of love wisdom. Ray 3, the ray of active intelligence. Ray 4, the ray of harmony, beauty, and art. Ray 5, the ray of concrete knowledge or science. Ray 6, the ray of devotion or of abstract idealism. Ray 7, the ray of ceremonial magic or order. There is one basic law called the law of periodicity. This law governs all manifestation. Whether it is the manifestation of a solar logos through the medium of a solar system or the manifestation of a human being through the medium of a form. This law controls likewise in all the kingdoms of nature. There are certain other laws in the system which are linked with this one. Some of them are as follows. The law of economy, the law governing matter, the third aspect. The law of attraction, the law governing soul, the second aspect. The law of synthesis, the law governing spirit or the first aspect. Each of these laws manifests primarily on one or other of the seven planes of the solar system. 
Each law sweeps periodically into power, and each plane has its period of manifestation and its period of obscuration. Every manifested life has its three great cycles birth, life, and death, appearance, growth, and disappearance, or inert motion, activity, and rhythmic motion. Knowledge of the cycles involves knowledge of number, sound, and color. Full knowledge of the mystery of the cycles is the possession only of the perfect adept. All souls are identical with the Oversoul. The Logos of the Solar System is the Macrocosm, Man the Microcosm. Soul, or Consciousness, is an aspect of every form of life, from a Logos to an Atom. This relationship between all souls and the Oversoul constitutes the basis for the scientific belief in brotherhood. For brotherhood is a fact in nature, not an ideal. The law of correspondences will explain the details of this relationship. This law of correspondences, or of analogy, is the interpretive law of the system and explains God to man. Just as God is the macrocosm for all the kingdoms in nature, so man is the macrocosm for all the subhuman kingdoms. God sleeps in the minerals, dreams in the flowers, awakens in the animals, and in man knows he is awake. The goal for the evolution of the atom is self-consciousness as exemplified in the human kingdom. The goal for the evolution of man is group consciousness, as exemplified by a planetary logos. The goal for the planetary logos is God consciousness, as exemplified by a solar logos. The solar logos is the sum total of all states of consciousness within the solar system. In its essential nature, fire is threefold, but when in manifestation, it can be seen as a fivefold demonstration and be defined as follows. Fire by friction, or internal vitalizing fire. These fires animate and vitalize the objective solar system. They are the sum total of the Lagoque Kundalini when in full systemic activity. Solar fire or cosmic mental fire. This is that portion of the cosmic mental plane, which goes to the animation of the mental body of the Logos. This fire may be regarded as the sum total of all sparks of mind, the fires of the mental bodies and the animating principle of the evolving units of the human race in the three lower worlds. Electric fire, or the Logoic flame divine, this fire is the distinguishing mark of our Logos, and it is that which differentiates him from all other Logi. It is his dominant characteristic, and the sign of his place in cosmic evolution. This threefold fire may be expressed in ray terms as follows. First, we have the animating fires of the solar system which are the fires of the primordial ray of active intelligence, matter. These constitute the energy of Brahma, the third aspect of the Logos. Next are to be found the fires of the divine ray of love wisdom, the ray of intelligent love, which constitutes the energy of the Vishnu aspect, 
or the second aspect of the Logos. Finally are to be found the fires of the cosmic mental plane, which are the fires of the cosmic ray of will or power. They might be regarded as the ray of intelligent will and are the manifestation of the first aspect of the Logos, the Mahadeva aspect. The ray of intelligent activity is a ray of a very demonstrable glory and of a higher point of development than the other two. Being the product of an earlier Makalapa or previous solar system, it embodies the basic vibration of this solar system and is its great internal fire, animating and vitalizing the whole and penetrating from the center to the periphery. It is the cause of rotary motion and therefore of the spheroidal form of all that exists. The ray of intelligent love. This is a ray which embodies the highest vibration of which our solar logos or deity is capable in this present solar system. It is not yet vibrating adequately, nor has it attained the peak of its activity. It is the basis of the cyclic spiral movement of the Logoic body. And just as the law of economy is the law governing the internal fires of the solar system, so the cosmic law of attraction and repulsion is the basic law of this divine ray. The ray of intelligent will. Little as yet can be said about this ray. It is the ray of cosmic mind, and in its evolution parallels that of cosmic love. But as yet its vibration is slower and its development is more retarded. This is definitely and deliberately so, and is due to the underlying purpose and choice of the Solar Logos, who seeks on his high level to achieve a more rounded out development. And he therefore concentrates on the development of cosmic love in this cycle. The law of synthesis governs this ray and is the basis of the systemic movement that may be best described as that of driving forward through space or forward progression. Little can be predicted in this ray and its expression. It controls the movement of the entire ring pass knot in connection with its cosmic center. These three expressions of the divine life may be regarded as expressing the triple mode of manifestation. First, the objective or tangible universe. Second, the subjective worlds of form. And thirdly, the great spiritual internal fires that animate and vitalize themselves in a twofold manner. First, as latent heat. This is the basis of rotary motion and the cause of the spheroidal coherent manifestation of all existence from the galactic atom, the solar atom, planetary atom, the human atom, down to the minutest atom. Second, as active heat. This results in the activity and the driving forward of material evolution. On the highest plane, the combination of these three factors is known as the sea of fire, of which Akasha is the first differentiation of pre-genetic matter. Akasha, when in manifestation, expresses itself as Fohat, or divine energy. And Fohat, on the various planes, is known as ether, air, fire, water, and electricity. It is the sum total of that which is active, animated, or vitalized, and of all that concerns itself with the adaption of the form to the needs of the inner flame of life.
Let us briefly consider, therefore, the correspondence between the greater whole and the unit man, and then consider the sections in which it will be wise to study. Fire in the microcosm is likewise threefold in essence and fivefold in manifestation. First, there is internal vitalizing fire, which is the correspondence to fire by friction. This is the sum total of the individual kundalini and animates the corporeal frame and demonstrates also in the twofold manner. First, as latent heat, which is the basis of life of the spherical cell or atom and of its rotary adjustment to all other cells. Second, as active heat or prana. This animates all and is the driving force of the evolving form. It shows itself in the four ethers and in the gaseous state. This fire is the basic vibration of the little solar system in which the monad or human spirit is the logos. And it holds the personality or material man in objective manifestation, thus permitting the spiritual unit to contact the plane of densest matter. It has its correspondence in the ray of intelligent activity and is controlled by the law of economy. Second, the fire or spark of mind, which is the correspondence in man to solar fire. This constitutes the thinking, self-conscious unit or soul. This fire of mind is governed by the law of attraction and is its greater correspondence. It is this spark of mind in man emanating a spiral cyclic activity, which leads to the expansion and to his eventual return to the center of his system, the monad, the origin and goal for the reincarnating human being. <laughs> As in the macrocosm, this fire also manifests in a twofold manner. It shows as the intelligent will, which links the monad or spirit with the lowest point of contact, the personality, functioning through the physical brain. It likewise demonstrates, as yet imperfectly, as a vitalizing factor in the thought forms fabricated by the thinker. Presently, too few of people are in close enough touch with their own higher self that they cannot yet build matter of the mental plane into a form which can be truly said to be an expression of the thoughts, purpose, or desire of their soul. But in due time, as the consciousness of humanity evolves and expands into higher levels of awareness, the thought forms will begin to reflect those higher, more subtle impulses coming from the soul. Third, finally, there is the monadic divine flame. This embodies the highest vibration of which the monad is capable. It is governed by the law of synthesis and is the cause of forward movement of the evolving human being. We now come, in due course, to the point of merging or to the end of manifestation and to the consummation of the great cycle. What shall we therefore find? Just as in the macrocosm, the blending of the three essential fires of the cosmos marked the point of logoic attainment, so too in the blending of the essential fires of the microcosm do we arrive at the apotheosis of human attainment for this cycle. When the latent fire of the personality, or lower self, blends with the fire of mind, that of the higher self, and finally merges with the divine flame, then the man takes his fifth initiation in this solar system, and has completed one of his greater cycles. When the three blaze forth as one fire, liberation from matter, or from material form is achieved. Matter has been correctly adjusted to spirit, and finally the indwelling life slips forth out of its sheath which forms now only a channel of liberation. Fire is the most unaltered reflection in heaven as on earth of the one flame. 
It is life and death, the origin and end of every material thing. It is divine substance. Sajivanadikamu, Varagas Mirputa Yikadi.